let's call the meeting to order and rise for the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, and before we move uh, on with the normal agenda, I'm going to, spoiler alert, kill all the suspense the moment you've been waiting for for the last year is here, and Jason will walk around and let you pick where your Christmas district tree will be. Is there a drum roll? Actually, guys, I'm going to have, uh, ben, I mean, Linda White here, uh, I mean, dang, um, go around and... Uh, Go ahead and have you guys draw from the box there, and then I will write down. So as we do every year, um, last year, remember, right, we started with District 1 and went around, so this year we'll start with District 23 and go around the other way. You draw from the um, box here. Whatever number you draw is your tree location. Linda will have the maps here if you would like, and we can also email it out. Um, Cal, if you wouldn't mind, we can email it to you, and you can disperse it amongst the delegates. No problem. Perfect. So we can do that, or if you want a hard copy, we'll have it here at the office. And all that does is it'll show you where your tree location is at. So Linda, if you wouldn't mind, we'll start with 23. Or 21. How are you? Location number five. Tree location number five for District 23. District 22, tree location number 23. District 21 has tree location 2. District 20. 20. 20. <laughs> I'm sorry? District 20. Okay, and your location... Just District 20 at tree location number two. <laughs> All right, District 19 at location eight. All right, District 18 at tree location 15. 16 will be at the North Clubhouse. <laughs> District 15, tree location 21. District 14, tree location number 11. Shh. Shh. All right, District 13 at location 7. District 11, tree location number 13. District 17 will be at the North Clubhouse.
District 21, location 19. District six, six is the number. Oh, no way. District 8, location 22. District 7, location 12. District 5, location 9. District 4, location 14. Uh, District 3, location 10. District 2, 20. 20? Yes. District 2 at location number 20. District 1, location 3. And then District 9 is going to get tree location 1. Thank you, everyone. Um, they will get these written down. They will be put on the sheet. And then uh, we will email it to you, Cal. But if you would like a hard copy, it will be here at the rec department. Um, give Linda a day or two, maybe Monday, if you don't mind. Give her until Monday just to have it all done and ready for you guys. Uh, one thing I do want to say with this is, it happens every year, and every year I see it grow more and more and more. Um, it turns into a competition. You guys are really, we got to watch that only because of the amount of power that we are pulling from all of these. Um, <laughs> every year it seems like we have to spend money on updating and upgrading the power to the street, to the, to the median, to accommodate all the blow ups and the extras that go along with the tree lights. So, uh, as best of it, I love Christmas. You gotta ask my wife, I'm, it takes me three weeks to decorate. But, um, you guys, let's just try to keep it not adding any more than we did last year, if we can, okay? Try to limit it to, if we can. Thank you. Thank you, Jason. And just uh, to refresh everybody's memory, the trees will be available the weekend before Thanksgiving, and we need to be finished with the de tree decoration by the following Sunday night for the lighting ceremony. Weekend before Thanksgiving? Before, before Thanksgiving, yeah. So Correct, on Mon Monday? Okay, on the Monday before, Monday, Thanksgiving. Monday before Thanksgiving. Monday before Thanksgiving. And we did, that was done because if we did it on the weekend following Thanksgiving, you only have like one day to get your tree decorated. Monday before Thanksgiving, your trees will be available in the bus room. Okay, to move back to the regular agenda, uh, the first item on the agenda is really to approve the district delegate meetings from our October, minutes from our uh, October 3rd meeting. Does anyone have any comment on the minutes? Kate. Kate Reed, District 20. I just had a question. Uh, the minutes state that the trees lighting will be on December the 1st, and I, I realize that's what they said at the meeting, but I thought Jason said it's going to be on the 2nd. Yep. What date? The tree lighting will be on the 2nd. Tree lighting is on the 2nd. What time? 5 p.m. Any other notes on the minutes? 
Is there a motion to accept the minutes? Thank you, Kate. And a second from Marcia. All those in favor, signify by raising your hand. And it carries unanimous. And next, we will move to the chair report. Uh, given the time that we took on uh, collecting names for the Christmas wish, wish list, which is a great project, I and mean, I thank you all for participating in it. Um, I won't say a lot. I will say that the new lounge looks spectacular. Really, really nice choices on a lot of the features there. Well done. I think very well done to everybody who had to participate that in that and make choices. Um, and then yesterday in our workshop, we actually got through three of the items that we outlined about six months ago on things to work on, which is great because the last meeting before that, we only got through one. So four down, 38 to go. And that's all I'm going to say for the chair report. We will move on. Uh, first guest speaker on the agenda is Michelle Walter for Community Awareness. Good afternoon, delegates. Um, I really don't have a lot to report. We had our community awareness this past Tuesday, and we had Nate Smith from the city of Banning, and he gave an update on the uh, stormwater assessment fee that is going to go before the city council. So this is not a done deal yet. It still has to go before the city council, but uh, he wanted to come and do a presentation. And then we also had the veterans uh, group coming in. I had um, from the... Um, gosh, you know what? I didn't even write any of this down. But you'll be able to see it on Channel 97 if you weren't uh, if you weren't there. And I just wanted to let you know our next welcome home will be January 23rd. And I will send an email out to everybody, and I will let you know what um, how many people you have. And at the delegate meeting, I will give you out your welcome cards if, if you want them. And um, community awareness will be on January 7th from one to three in the ballroom. And I'm just gonna give you the stats real quick. You don't have to write these down. I will email them to you. But just so it's on channel 97, I'm just gonna say them real quick. There were 54 active or coming soon as 11-4. 51 homes from 335 to 589. Three condos from 358 to 365. There were 25 in escrow as of 11-4. 25 homes, no condos. Homes, 249. Who can buy a home now for $249,000? Right, and so um, up to uh, 565. Closed escrows in October, we only had 10, 10 escrows, so it's kind of slow. I get my stats from Bonnie. Um, she's on the marketing committee, and she says we have entered the slow season for selling homes usually trends this way until after the first of the year. So hopefully we'll start seeing more homes um, getting sold and we get that money coming in. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Next we have uh, from the EPAP exec team, Candace is here to talk about the shelter in place drill earlier in October. Good afternoon, delegates, FSR and residents. Um, as you all know, we had our annual drill on October 17th, and we did not do as well as we had hoped. We learned many things from this drill. Uh, most of them were around communication that we thought was going to work that did not work the way we planned it. Um, this was our first drill uh, using a virtual EOC, and all of the uh, residents and um, radio people had to be in their homes. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was um, tasked with uh, texting the coordinators, communication unit, MRTs, and administration. When I attempted to text, the phone would not let me. There was supposed to be an app installed that didn't get installed, so I was unable to notify the people that I was supposed to which meant some of our volunteers did not get on the radio until several minutes after the drill began. We are looking into a commercial texting system that will allow us to mass text. Um, there are several conditions and policy provisions that must be met before we can apply for a 30-day free trial to see if this will work for us. All EPAP operations were conducted with personnel in their homes using radios to communicate. 
we used two EOC radio operators to assure coverage over all of the districts in Sun Lakes. One was in the north area and one was in the south. Each operator duplicated each other's messages to ensure that all of the districts heard all of the messages that were sent out. Um, unfortunately, we did not inform the coordinators that we would have two separate, two EOCs and that they might be hearing double messages, so this confused them. Um, in the future, we're looking at um, having radios that will boost the reception and we would only have to have one uh, EOC operator instead of the two that we originally used. Um, we did a roll call of all of the districts to determine who was participating. We realized at this time that Securitas was using the same channel that the EOC was using, which is channel four, and that the coordinators, uh, there was crosstalk between coordinators, EOC, and Securitas. Um, this problem will be resolved because Securitas will have their own radios and their own channels in the future. Uh, we had four districts that did not participate because they did not have enough volunteers or could not um, get their uh, volunteers prepared by the time of the drill. Eight of the remaining districts have turned in their statistics. We are average about 50% of the residents that participated, and this is consistent with previous years. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Candace. Uh, next, Charlie London from District 23 is here to talk about all the things he does when he's not a delegate. <laughs> Good afternoon, Master Board, fellow delegates, and audience and residents. Welcome. My name is Charlie London. I'm the president of the Friendship Club. If you don't know about the Friendship Club, it started in the 1990s, somewhere around 1996, by the Feldman family. They ended up willing to the club quite a considerable amount of money. They spent a lot of dinner and entertainment in the Palm Springs area in Redlands. And since then, we are bringing in Vegas-type entertainment right here to our ballroom with a delicious buffet provided by Josh and the previous chefs that we've had. It's been very accommodating. We thank the restaurant for that. And uh, it's, some of us make date nights out of it, come to the dinner, come to the show. The, the beauty of that is you don't have to drive very far to get home. We are having a new membership drive the Friendship Club used to have close to 900 members when they first started out. Now we're around 300 members. Still maybe one of the biggest clubs in Sun Lakes. I think Bocce might have a similar amount. But uh, we're going to be having a membership drive uh, for the rest of this year, January and February. What we'd like to do is invite all residents, even if you're not members, to come to our show for $30. Try it, see if you like it. If you enjoy the entertainment that we put on, become a member. We are also selling season tickets. Six tickets for the price of five, $125. And you will see, like I said, we haven't had a bad performance from the people that I've talked to since I've been the president of this club. We also provide music from the 50s, 60s, 80s, and 70s. Most of the people preferred the rock and roll type music out of the 50s and 60s. About 20% like Broadway shows. We've had ventriloquists here. We've had some very entertaining people. We've had, uh, I think it was Steinwick Pianos, the one that they sell. A representative that came out here and played the fastest fingers I've ever seen on a piano. Faster than Jerry Lee Lewis. Uh, come out and try us. Uh, we do, like I said, have that membership drive going, and it's a good time to, for 30 bucks, come out and see some Vegas-type entertainment. All of our entertainers have credential. They've either played on cruise ships, been in Vegas, or Atlantic City, and you won't be disappointed. Any questions? Come on. Yes. 
you have to make reservations for the restaurant. They're open from 4.30 to 6.30. This week's uh, menu will be a pot roast, and I believe salmon with vegetable medley, and also a dessert for $20. That doesn't include tip or gratuities or whatever you consume under the other type of beverages. <laughs> Any other questions? If not, we'd like to just see you walk in at the door on Sunday. We open the doors at 6 o'clock, and our shows start at 7. And thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, next on the speaker list, the Library Committee is here to tell us about a special event. Good afternoon. Uh, Peter Fernandez, Chair of the Library Committee. Uh, I passed out to all of the delegates, well, actually, it's green. It's not yellow or gold uh, flyer that I'm hoping that all of you can uh, let your residents of your district know about the presentation we're having next Friday here in the ballroom in conjunction with the Beaumont Library. If you look at the attachment uh, with the flyer, there's a lot of ideas, a lot of ideas and uh, technology that I don't know anything about, but that a lot of people <laughs> will be uh, uh, pleased to receive. A couple of the things that I've noticed here is the California digital newspaper uh, where you can, uh, pro where it provides free access to digital, digital uh, California newspapers from 1846 to the present. Once upon a time in the libraries, there was a machine, I forgot the name of it, but you had to go in there and kind of scroll for anything that you wanted to find. Well, now you can get all this on your computer or on your phone. Uh, Family Search, which would be uh, in conjunction with the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints, and over there in Utah at, the, uh, at uh, Brigham Young, they have the most extensive genealogical uh, library in the world in terms of finding anything about all of your relatives, some of your relatives, maybe some of them you don't want to know about, but then the other ones are okay. Uh, GCF Global, free videos and reading material, uh, learning everyday skills like how to use the internet, which would be for me, computer typing, other programs, and career advancement. And the bottom one, Tech Boomers, a free educational website geared around helping people learn everyday skills. So actually the Beaumont Library is going to be presenting uh, ideas for people that are advanced in technology and people that are kind of novices like myself. So get the word out and we're hoping to have a good turnout. Thank you. Peter, a couple questions? A couple questions, I have one. Other people might. Um, so to use the resources at the, Be at the Beaumont Library, that's a library card requirement, is that correct? No, uh, well, I mean, they're gonna be, when they come out here, they're gonna explain how you can uh, get a Beaumont Library card. A lot of people, I was really surprised to find this out. They asked me if you have to live in Beaumont to obtain a Beaumont Library card, and you do not. Is that different than the County of Riverside card? Uh, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, uh, their, their library, their, the Beaumont Library card is for the Beaumont Library. But if you have one for the county of Riverside, I, I am sure it works over there. Yes, sir. Greg? Microphone. Microphone. Please. Thank you. Greg Foyko, District 16. If you live in California, you can get any library card. I have, I, I have a, a LA Public Library card. Uh, provides tremendous amount of information and recreation. Yeah, and I understand now uh, uh, Smiley Library in Redlands, which once upon a time you had to live in the city of Redlands. The, I mean, the library is fantastic, but you had to live in the city of Redlands to get a, uh, a library card for Redlands. But now, as of, I guess, this year, it's open to anyone. Okay, thank you. Uh, and Loretta has a question for you. Peter? <laughs> Hang up there for a second. Loretta has, we have a couple more questions. Loretta? Microphone. I just wanted to add one thing as an ex-board member for the Banning Library. And Okay. 
I, I was just saying that as an ex-board member for the Banning Library, all of this is available to you and for everyone. So I hope that this will encourage growth for the Banning Library. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that's, that's a good point because uh, in working with both libraries, Beaumont seems to be a little bit more uh, in the forefront in terms of a lot of things that they're doing, and especially the community outreach in Beaumont. By the way, this presentation next week was based on the survey that we had in the libraries that we posted or put in there a few months ago. The response from many of the residents is they wanted to know more about how to access e-books and e-magazines e and so on. So we jumped on it and we're doing this next week. Any other questions? Oh, okay, another question. Uh, Jean Dobbs in District 10. So are you suggesting that the Beaumont Library is more advanced? Well, I, I don't know why you're pushing Beaumont instead of banning. Well, I've, I've worked at both libraries. As a matter of fact, there's residents here in, in Sun Lakes who are on the Friends of the Banning Library, and they seem to be doing a good job. But I think Beaumont has a few more resources in the terms of how they're tied in with the county more so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and, I, and I'm hoping with the residents here in, in Banning and Sun Lakes that are, are with the friends of the Banning Library, who I know, uh, hopefully we can do more outreach with them also. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. And that's it for the uh, guest speakers. Next, we're going to have a uh, report from Gail Billick from the Rules Committee. Thank you. The uh, Rules Committee has been working on updating the binder so that we'll have a cohesive binder to work with. We're going to pass it around and you can take a look at it. In the inside cover, if you want a copy of this when it's completed, we'll put your name in your district we'll make sure you get it. If you see things that are missing or you have that you think should be in there, please get copies to me so that we can add it to it. This is not necessarily complete. It'll change as things change, so it needs to be flowing um, to work through it all. So we'll pass it around and a thank you to Marsha and Patty who have been on the committee since the beginning. Thank you. Uh, Jim Nickel, District 3. Will that always also be available for our uh, uh, alternate delegates? I don't see why not. Yeah, I think we should, yes, certainly. Yeah. Thank they, you. They would have to request it though. We'll probably make up a few extra just to have them on hand if somebody needs it or we get a new delegate, but it Fair would be enough. great if they would request it. Okay, doing that basis. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Gail. Any other questions? Greg. Greg Voiko, District 16. Why don't you just make the handbook a PDF and put it on the website under district delegates, and then anybody who wants it can download it? We will. We will, but uh, not everybody um, works in the same way. So some people prefer to have the actual documents in their hands in the book. But it'll be available both electronically and physically. What are you doing, what are you doing over there, Jim? <laughs> Again, thank you, Gail. And now we move to announcements from the Board of Directors. Thank you. Uh, Eric Wenzel, our Director of Food and Beverage, is no longer employed with First Service. Chris Mitchell and Jason Ewald will be handling all matters relative to food and beverage. Please call the reception desk number, 951-845-2191, if you need any assistance in planning for an upcoming event. At our open board session on October 23rd, the board approved the annual budget for 2025. The monthly HOA fees have been raised $20 to 385. The board would like to thank First Service, the FAC Committee, the PAC Committee, and everyone that uh, assisted in developing the annual budget. Uh, after a uh, town hall a meeting and four budget drafts, we finally agreed upon a budget that meets the needs of our community without having an excessive HOA increase. The Opticom gate entry system has been approved by the board and installed. This will enable the fire department and first responders to have immediate access to our community in the unmanned gates. 
This will save time in, in the uh, emergency situation. Effective January 1st, 2025, we will be changing from CalGates to Automation Pride Company for preventive maintenance on our entry gates. With this change, we anticipate less downtime and less repairs on our gates. You may have noticed on gate three, it's, it's down more than it's uh, functional. So uh, we're, we're anticipating a big, big improvement in this area. And, and they're cheaper. <laughs> so, um, the Sun Lakes investment policy uh, was last dated 2014. We have updated that working with the FAC, with the board, with legal to make sure that um, you know, it's more, moder more modernized and we're you know, able to be used in the community. So we've done that. As uh, was mentioned earlier, the lounge expansion is complete. We've got a few things we, we're still tweaking. Uh, there will be an acoustic engineer coming out soon to uh, help put some dampening or whatever you want to call it, whatever it's officially called, on the walls and potentially the ceilings to to keep some of the, the noise from bouncing all over the place. So it, it can get a little loud in there right now, but we're working on that, so just be patient with that, and we appreciate it. We appreciate everybody's help on that, not just uh, the board and the, the people directly. We appreciate the support and the input from the delegates and from the community. The South Clubhouse Pool is scheduled to open tomorrow. Finally, um, just I'm going to throw in an editorial, which I usually get slapped afterwards when I do this, but I'm going to throw an editorial. If you've got a major problem, go to message management first. We can usually uh, fix that. You're, you have the right, of course, to go to the authorities, go to the health department, go to whoever. But if you can go to, and again, this is my editorial, and I admit it. Uh, you try to handle it in-house if we can. It would have been a lot, lot simpler process. Uh, anybody interested in volunteer for one of our 13 committees, you can submit a volunteer interest form at the administration building. Uh, Tammy Morgan will organize those. And the reason for all these committees, of course, is to keep the community successful and, and dedicate and de everybody dedicated to the success of our community. And on that note, I don't know if we're going to be doing a December meeting, but happy holidays. Thank you. Any questions for Board of Directors? Okay, we'll move to the next item. The next item would be announcements from the administration. Hello, everyone. Just to follow up on Randy's uh, comment about the South Clubhouse, it will open tomorrow, 5.30 a.m., um, normal operating hours. Um, we are going to close Monday through Friday each day from 11 to 12 so that deck can be picked up and cleaned up. Um, that means out of the pool, out of the pool area completely. So we'll have some issues with that. We've added a number of mats which I know people, some people are in favor of it, but some are not. But working with the county, we've agreed both sides that that's probably a plus and it cr creates a little safety barrier on our behalf. So once again, tomorrow, a week from Friday, which is the, the 16th on Saturday, we will be closing the main pool. Closing means no heat and the north pool as well. So you'll have one heated pool at the south. This is after the 16th. You'll have your three jacuzzis that will remain hot throughout the year. Any questions? Yes. Mike, 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 Mike. Not Wayne's. Um, yeah, thank you very much for getting that done. Um, what was, I, I, uh, you're closing for cleanup uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Oh, Monday through Friday. Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So the monitors are going to be responsible for two days, and my crew will do it the other three. 
Any other questions? Thank you all. Thank you, Mark. Okay, and then Jason will be following up right after me. So, um, and you don't need to write all these down. I've emailed my report to the delegate uh, um, president and vice president, or chairperson, vice chair, and they will then email it to you. So, we have volunteer appreciation luncheon. That luncheon will be on 12-12, that is a Thursday, December 12th, Thursday at 11.30. Delegates, alternate delegates, committee members, board members are invited. Unfortunately, spouses cannot attend because that is already at 100 and X amount of people already. So we apologize, but we cannot accommodate the spouse uh, for this volunteer appreciation luncheon. House account update, as I mentioned last uh, delegate meeting, uh, the ability to charge on the house account will end December 1st. Uh, no change to how you use the ID cards. You still need to bring your ID card to the restaurant in order to open a ticket. Um, I've already been working with the staff. That is a priority, and I know it's, it, Angel, we, you know me, my kids, your kids, we all know each other. I need the card. That is a requirement, and, and many of you have asked why would I do such a draconian way of doing it. It's because several years ago, maybe you weren't living here at the time, but we had a great group from the state of California, the California Taxing Authority or whatever they, that used to be the BOE, now it's changed. They came out, they did a, a thorough audit, and the association had to pay a large amount um, because they felt that, well, you serve the public, you have no proof or no pol or procedure that to ensure that it's just members. That is why we instituted the member card many years ago. I think 2019 is when we instituted it. So it is important for you to bring that. There'll be no change, you still need to bring it. Uh, monthly RV leases, the golf memberships will still be billed monthly. No change to the script process. Script will still be an option to use in the food and beverage and golf operations. No change on how to after hours golfers will be charged. You sign the thing if you're an annual. Uh, it will be noted if you're not an annual, you will be billed. Uh, David has been working with, uh, the Golf Pro has been working with clubs on how signing up for different tournaments and everything will go. I will also be talking to him how the ladies golf clubs will go. Um, and so we've developed a procedure for that. So again, December 1st, you'll be using credit card or script to pay for purchases made at the pro shop, restaurant, lounge, or sandwich. Okay, now let's put on the food and beverage hat. Thanksgiving brunch, which will be a traditional Thanksgiving brunch. It's not gonna have wacky coconut shrimp or stir fry. It will have your staples of turkey, ham. We will have a steak for those prime rib lovers that love the carving station. We will have that. Those tickets go on sale tomorrow. There are two seatings, 11 to 1 and 1 to 3. And as a reminder, this will be emailed to you. Cal's going to email it to you right after the meeting, I'm sure. Tickets go on sale. Adult tickets are $34.95. Children 7 to 11 are $19.99. And children 6 and under are free. We will be also, through much arm twisting by the restaurant and lounge committee, doing to-go meals, uh, as we have done in the past, there will be a limited amount of to-go meals that will need to be picked up Wednesday, the 27th, before Thanksgiving. Those will also go on sale, um, and I believe those were $24.95 at a nun? I believe it's $24.95. I'll confirm that. There'll be a flyer on that. Yes, $24.95. Thank you. From the heavens, at a nun speaks. Uh, there'll also be a nice little flyer. We're going to be blasting this out, uh, so you'll see that. Christmas buffet will be held Sunday, December 22nd. Again, there'll be two seatings for that. More information on ticket and all of that will be coming later. Right now we're focused on Thanksgiving and the November events that are coming. Uh, to help with that, um, also, New Year's Eve will be addressed by recreation. And to clarify, because many people have, have pulled me to the side um, in the bars, I've been running back and forth. Um, there was something that said, hey, the association puts on karaoke and it was clarified by Linda and Jason that the association has not done karaoke. Instead, that has been done at the North or South Clubhouses. 
but recreation will be giving updates. Now, with all these banquets and these exciting events coming on, we would like to welcome Letty back. Letty has returned from her leave of absence. She is the banquet coordinator. She is the one, there was a number that Bob gave and there'll be another number, 951-769-6653. You can directly call Letty. Letty will be the point of contact for banquets. What I like about it is we turn to a way that I used to do it years ago. Sun Lakes did it for a little bit before I got here and it changed but a coordinator that is there to set up your banquet, what kind of linens you're gonna want, uh, finalizing a banquet menu so you get this nice three-page document that says here, here are your options with the pricing, please pick. Make it a lot easier for you and your clubs to make a decision and to know who to contact and actually have somebody return your phone call. That's what Letty and I really appreciate Chelsea in the front desk as well who has been helping. So you have two people reaching back out to you to say, hey, there's an intake form, I'm gonna get your information, I'll give it to Letty, Letty will be contacting you. So we've made some changes and I think that will streamline this process better. Uh, the new sandwich menu will be coming soon. We're working on that right now with Chef Josh. The dinner menu will be coming soon as well and this dinner menu will be, every month it will be different. Now you're gonna say, Chris, why are you changing the dinner menu that happens on Friday and Saturday? Uh, why are you changing it every month? Because what I've noticed in the numbers, and again, I'm an accountant at heart, uh, put my little green shade hat on, that there is a time that members are excited about new things, and then the excitement goes down, people stop attending. So to increase that excitement and have you coming back, that's what some things we're gonna make is uh, some of these changes is the dinner menu will change every month. And we're gonna put that in advance. We're gonna start instead of being reactionary, we're gonna be more proactive in the restaurant and give you, hey, this is what the planned menu is for the next month coming up so you can be prepared. But again, we feel, and I feel uh, specifically that this will be better for the members so they don't keep going back and say, it's the same boring thing. So that will be a change. Uh, the lounge food and drink menu is out and will be posted online. Apologize, I thought it had been posted. It non informed me today, it was not. I do, um, hopefully, you will go to our lounge and try some of the new libations that uh, our uh, mixologist Angel has developed. Uh, I think you'll like them. Um, I know several of you who came out to our opening night tried them. Uh, they've, the reception on that has been very positive, so please continue to enjoy, drink, and be merry during this holiday season. Now I'm gonna put my GM hat back on and go to administrative updates. Uh, the review of disrepair houses is ongoing. Again, I'm gonna ask you that please email me your concerns and the address. I already have 45 homes on my list next to Bob, and I will be touring those starting Monday to address if it is vacant, if it's not vacant, if it is a, a Sun Lakes uh, managed property, is it coming to be Sun Lakes, it's in the foreclosure process, or is it the bank foreclosure process, or is it just the people are just not keeping up their house. So I've got several categories and I will be going through. Uh, Greg was very good. I know he walked out, probably didn't want to hear my report, but that's okay. Um, he was helpful on ad identifying. He, he even went over the top with, here are the pictures, here's the address, here's the concern, this is in my district. So you don't have to go that far, but identifying the house and the address, that will help me. Uh, Mark Schleiden already gave you updates. Um, as a key reminder, the open session for the uh, Board of Directors, the Master Board of Directors, will be held Wednesday, November 20th. That is the open session, because we're not gonna have it the day before Thanksgiving, when you're all coming to get your to-go meals. Uh -huh. um, and then we will be having, and we will announce at the November meeting, uh, the time and date for the December meeting and with that, Jason Ewalls now is going to give an update on recreation and other items. Are there any questions for Chris before we move to Jason? I, I do have a question. <laughs> Janice. Speedy Gonzalez, can you put that I gotta use your microphone, I'm sorry, I couldn't even hear you. <laughs> give the woman a microphone. Would you please give us the phone number again for Letty? Oh, Letty, oh, and for those wonderful people at home, 951-769-6653. You. you got it. Chris, Marcia. Um, just a, 
just a quick reminder, the, what is in the... Oh, yes. Yeah. I did bring the lifestyles up for you some did, reason. Yeah, yeah. So I do apologize for those members watching at home and the delegates. What's in the lifestyles is incorrect. Um, the price was higher than, uh, than it should have been, and so we've been able to reduce uh, the inflation reduction that we've been able to do. I'm just kidding. Uh, but we've been able to reduce that price, so what's in the lifestyles is incorrect. What you'll get on my flyer that was emailed to the delegate uh, chairperson and this flyer that will be going to the entire community has the correct pricing on it. Thank you, Marcia. Yes, ma'am. Ann. Is the phone system going to be updated when you, the, in the telephone book all those phone numbers that are listed? As reference in calling them, they're wrong. I mean, Chris Rubino's not here anymore, mm -hmm. of course, but it says I'm out of the office. So are those types We are of working on that. So we've got one issue with the lifestyles having the wrong information, and then we have to work on our archaic system to change that. That is, it's ongoing. B? If other delegates have information on vacant houses or uh, poor landscape maintenance, would you like us to present those to you? Yeah, e please, B, if you email? can email Jason and myself so we can address it. Like I said, I've got 45, 46 homes that I'll be touring to address that, so definitely that would help me. Thank you. Anita. Chris, how soon will we get the correct prices for the Thanksgiving buffet? The reason I'm, I'm asking is I have that in my newsletter and I'm trying to get it to the printer so I can get it out. So Adnan is emailing it to the entire group. So this is final. These are final. You'll be getting this flyer right here and it's coming out. Should be after this meeting. Adnan will hit send and it will go to the entire. And one more, place one more time online. from the heavens. Check your emails. Okay. It was blasted about two minutes ago. Thank From you. the heavens, Thank Sorry, you. and none speaks. Thank you. <laughs> I have okay, a, with that, I have a comment and a question. I'm sorry, uh, the comment is that uh, when we were organizing the uh, district party we're having with District 22, um, it, there was a lot of tension and turmoil in the uh, banquet at that moment in time with Eric's departure and Letty not being here. And Josh did a really nice job. He was very, um, we were very comfortable with him. He was humorous, he was engaging, and uh, he came back with a price that works for us, and so that's great, that's not a problem at all. But um, in that transaction, one of the things that happened in the final quote that he sent me was he asked for a deposit. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's new for district parties? It is new for so all events. So do you want events. to talk about that? So for all events. For all events, we're asking for a deposit. What has <laughs> happened, unfortunately, is when we have not collected a deposit, people will sign up for 40, 80 people, and then cancel a week before. Well, I've already ordered my food. I've ordered, you might remember the, the shrimp torpedo special that Carlos had put out, the shrimp. That was because one party will leave the uh, guilty anonymous right now, canceled on their event. Well, I'm stuck with shrimp and everything in my freezer. And so as an incentive to make sure that you follow through on urine, and this is a normal business practice, we're asking for a deposit ahead of time. And what percentage deposit, or is it now, a flat right amount? Right now it's 50%. We will be changing that. I will be, and I will be saying, Adnan and Anita will be doing a talk to the GM. We will be clarifying that on the video. Right now it's 50%. That will change. Okay, and how is that payment made? That is paid for by credit card uh, for the clubs. We are accepting the checks from the clubs to pay that, so if it's an ICC, if it's another event, they can pay that with a check. Okay, at what location, how? Would so they... Letty would be taking care of that, Through Letty, Letty, or it will be another person that is supporting Letty, will be able to, again, that's why I wanted one point of contact for banquets and events like mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. so you knew it's either Letty, or it's gonna be somebody that Letty says, this person will be handled, or Linda, maybe, but Letty is the chief person to contact Very and good. interact with. Very good. Uh, Dave Miller, District 5, when will that deposit be due? Uh, so that is the due with the signing of the BEO, and you should sign your BEOs. That's another requirement, so that, that after you've how, how made do, your... 
How do we know how many people, are, when we start our event, how do we know how many people take That is what we're asking is the best estimate that you can give us at that time. Okay. So Because uh, remember, and, and I know it's hard, and you're saying, Chris, you've got to be fair. <laughs> Look at it, again, two sides of every coin. How much food do I need to purchase? Because that there's an impact on our side as well, is if you say, we estimate 80 people. Okay, it comes in less than, okay, then we need to, to reconcile that. But the problem that is, and this is what I've seen, is I've spent now a lot of time reviewing this, is either there's been cancellations or amounts are ordered and they're just totally wrong amounts. So we're asking you to give us the best estimate for your party, then a deposit will be made off that amount. Again, this is not, and I know it is new for Sun Lakes, yeah. This has not been the new situation where I have been and other banquet facilities. They ask for a deposit to ensure you're going to make it. Ann? What is the timing for the BEO? Uh, when are we supposed to receive the BEO? What, that for should be event. as you finalize that with Letty and you say, I agree, and you sign, that's when the deposit's due. When you finalize, your signature on the dotted line is what starts the ball rolling. You've got to make sure, and my staff know, I've got to get your signature on it. Okay. Thank you. On the deposit, are you microphone. just calling? Charlie, Charlie, microphone. Charlie. On the deposit, are you just accounting for the food, or you got gratuities, napkins, and other I've got costs? the full amount, and then we're taking a percentage of that. And that would be 50%? Right now it is, yes. Carly? Hi, Chris. Yes. Will you guys be holding the check for a while? Because like for our district, we get our money when we sell the tickets for our event. That would, um, we can, I'll have to talk to the team because right now, one, again, let me put my auditor's hat on. I don't like holding checks. So when I get that check, I process it because I don't want the staff, because this is a problem. I paid you. Where's the check? Can't find the check. Did you sure you paid me? Well, I'm not sure. Did you pay? We've run into that now twice, so I understand it's a problem with the tickets. I can go back and see what we can do, but that the problem is once money is received through a check, it's getting into the bank as soon as possible the next day. We do not, and this has happened with RVs in the past, golf memberships, we don't hold them. That is a control issue with accounting. You don't hold checks. Once they're in, they're endorsed, sent off to the bank. Uh, Dave Miller, District 5 again. Before, what's, I don't understand the difference. Before the chef or whoever we made the uh, arrangements with gave us a drop dead date, say a week before the event, and then we gave them the amount of people, then maybe we can give them a check. Mm -hmm. But why, why would it be beforehand? It, it, well, we, at, it, least it's gonna be, at least it's gonna be two weeks in advance. I can't do it the last week because the shipment from Cisco or this has been another problem. You wait till the week before, then I have to reach out to the vendor to get this large amount. And what has happened is, at the time the vendor had it, and then calls and said, I'm sorry, this is not, we don't have it. They have to scramble, and one of the events had bad meat, or the meat wasn't, not bad meat, but just wasn't cooked, wasn't a right cut. People complained about that. Giving us a much advance notice where I can finalize, I know the linens, I can place order at least a minimum of two weeks in advance has to be finalized so that staffing can be done, linens can be ordered, and the food can be ordered ample time to confirm that I have the product that you ordered. If I wait to the last minute, three days, one week, one of those things, and this is what has happened. Again, I've taken time to analyze what's been wrong with our banquets. We wait to the last minute, I don't have enough staff because the, the schedule is now being done two weeks in advance for the employee to know who's working what. The linen order may or may not get through. And then food, again, we've had problems where the vendor said, yeah, it's gonna be there, and then it is not. That, that's at least a minimum of two weeks before to finalize that event. I, I need that finalized. Kate? Kate Reed, District 20. Um, I was just wondering, is this something that is strictly under the purview of food and beverage? It didn't have to go before the board to be approved? Because it's a big change, a deposit. I no, guess. this is a, it's an operational, it's, no, it did not. It's an operational item. It's where we needed to make sure that this has been a problem that has happened several years, 
and we need to make sure we run it. Here's what's been put on us. Run it like a business, not a mom and pop. There are changes that I've got to make in order to accommodate my suppliers, my customers, my staff. All of that has to be taken into consideration. And before it's, it has been, and, and not to say whatever another person did in the past, they just did not do that full circle to make sure everything was checked. And that's where we've had problems. We have not been able to perform well. You have all sent emails privately or in this meeting talked about failure of food and beverage on this, failure of food and beverage on that. I am trying now to fix all of those failures. This is one of those steps, unfortunately, I need to take in order to produce a better event for you. B. I would like to thank you for your explanations in detail, being upfront with us, letting us know the reasons why the changes are being made. I think it's long overdue, and I appreciate the fact that you took it upon yourself to bring us up to par and really investigate what the situation is. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I'm hoping this year, B, as you say that, I've never in my career had losses in a November, December period. That's the holidays, that's banquet time. Last year was the worst I've ever seen. I can't have that happen again. And so that's why some of these changes, thank you, and we will continue to make the experience better for you, and we'll continue to work with you the best we can. Okay, now Jason, who is always bringing an uplifting message. <laughs> thank you, Chris. Uh, guys, just to talk, what Chris is talking about here, wow, that's... I, I wasn't a receiver either. Um, you guys, what Chris is talking, and he's really talking about this holiday season right now. Um, like he was saying, you know, the, the advance notice needed for the food orders, everything. It's really, right now during the season, it's hard. It's tough. This isn't the only place where we're having 100 banquets over the next 45 days. You know, there's other places out there trying to order from Cisco, from U.S. Foods, from Washington Produce. So that's why he was saying he needed that, that big lead time. Now, like Chris said as well, you know, after we get through these holidays here, are we open to looking at things? Of course. Of course we are. But for the holidays right now, we got to kind of stick to that for the reasons that Chris explained. Um, but, you know, looking, if you're looking at an event in June of next year, well, I'm not going to ask for your deposit now. Let's hold off on that. But, you yeah, guys, for the holidays, that's what we're going with right now. Okay. Um, uplifting stuff. Recreation. Yeah, let's have some fun. All right, coming up. Big thing this weekend, guys. Ferdinand, you almost cut me off. Oh, that's Lee. He's like, what the heck? <laughs> um, the Veterans Walk, you guys. Big one coming up. I believe this is the 13th one that we're doing. 14th one. Um, 13th, right? Yeah. This time flies by. I remember the second one, I believe. Um, you guys, get out there and let's do it. Over the past 13 years, we have raised close to $70,000 for the local VFW. Um, you know, roughly five, anywhere from five to nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a year over those past 13 years. Uh, and I appreciate every single one of you here in this room, out there in the community that has um, participated in that and uh, contributed to that. Uh, we're looking forward to another fun event this year. Um, as always, you can sign up the day of. It'll start 9 a.m. on Saturday, this Saturday the 9th. Um, please bring you, your friends, your families. Like I said, it's $25. You get a t-shirt. You get a continental breakfast. Come in here. Um, just have a great time. Enjoy. And like I said, it all goes to a good cause. So again, if you haven't signed up, please do. 9 a.m. Veterans Walk this Saturday. Um, and again, that route is usually just Country Club Riviera back to Country Club. Uh, we'll have a few water stations out there manned by the ROTC, the Junior ROTC. So, uh, again, make sure you're out there, you guys. Uh, December 2nd, yes, it did get changed. Traditionally, it has been on the 1st. Um, with this year, the way the dates landed, with the 1st being not only on a Sunday, but also being three days after Thanksgiving, uh, it's really tight. Trust me, I've been here for 11 years, and I know how long it takes some districts to put up Christmas trees, and three days is pushing it. So... Um, Let's, uh, we got that extra day. Not only that, the decorating committee had asked me for an extra day. Um, you know, it's, they're expected to change this clubhouse around, you know, Friday afternoon to s Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's going to be very tough for them. So they did ask for an extra day, and we were all good with it, especially um, being on a Sunday. If we do have electrical issues, I don't really have the electrical guys here to take care of it right away. So Monday would be a lot better day to do that. So again, we did push it to the second, but we still, um, it will go off as planned. 
Uh, same time as always, it'll be 5 p.m. and we'll start right out in the front of the clubhouse. We will light the trees up. We'll come on in here, have some hot chocolate, apple cider, cookies, and some great entertainment by both clubs within Sun Lakes. And as always, I know everybody loves the dance spectrum uh, students that come in and uh, do their little grand finale here. So looking forward to that. As again, that's a free event for all Sun Lakers to come and enjoy. Um, I look forward to seeing 500 people plus in this room. So um, December 10th, thank you guys all for picking your families. Um, December 10th is when you will drop them off in the bus room. So right here, everything will be set up just like it always has uh, on December 10th, 8 a.m., or sorry, 8.30 to 12. Um, something that we did last year, we started the holiday decorating contest. This will go again as well. Uh, it will go again this year. I'd like to thank those out there that did the Halloween decorating contest. That was something that was brand new this year, and um, we look forward to doing that next year as well. But I'm um, really looking forward to seeing the, all the holiday decorations, something that we've added uh, to this. Um, well, first, I'll let you just know that the registration starts November 12th, so um, look for that to come out. Deadline will be December 5th, and uh, there will be prizes for first, second, third, as well as you'll have your yard stake saying that you were a uh, placer. Um, something that the winners will be announced at the Monday Night Football on December 16th. So uh, just like we announced the, holiday, or the Halloween ones at the Doggy Parade, we'll announce these ones at Monday Night Football. Now, something that is new this year, uh, we're going to do a holiday golf cart parade. We'll start out in the main clubhouse here. We'll do a little route, probably Country Club, Riviera, I was thinking, out gate three, gate four, Twin Hills, back around the back, come back out, uh, gate three again, uh, down Country Club or down Riviera, maybe to Birdie, back around, just kind of going through the community. So um, look forward to more information on that. Linda's putting all that together. It'll be in the lifestyles, but it'll be on December 13th, holiday golf cart parade. Again, you guys don't need to write all this. It'll all be down in the lifestyles. Linda's already taken care of that. Um, we'll have flyers out. It'll be e-blasted out, um, but just something new. So registration, again, will start on the 12th, and the 9th will be the deadline. But again, uh, you'll see all that information come out to you. New Year's Eve, like Chris was alluding to, um, we just met with the recreation department, our committee yesterday, and I uh, had Chef Josh and Letty in there talking about New Year's Eve. The band will be MLC, so I know that's a very popular band, so I do expect these tickets to go quickly. Um, the lottery will take place December 1st through December 8th. The theme this year is a moment in time. The lottery drawing will be December 9th at 9.30 a.m. in the main clubhouse multi-purpose room. You must be present or have someone there to, to represent you to pick your table. Um, space will be limited to 280 people, okay? So it is a limited event. Um, ticket price is up in the air right now. I am waiting for Chef Josh to come back to me with a menu. Once he prices that menu out for me, I can get a price. It will be in the lifestyles. I will have it by uh, the deadline for Courtney, which will be in the next day or two. She's given me an extra couple days to throw in that number. So um, I will have that. You guys will see that out there, but just know that that's coming. It'll be coming the first week of December, New Year's Eve. Going to be a great, great night. Again, very popular band. Um, just always, always make sure you check the website, Good Day Sun Lakes, Channel 97, and the Facebook page for updated information. All your travels and trips and everything are out on the flyer rack. Um, speaking of music, I did want to mention one thing. Um, I've had a couple complaints about last night's music in the lounge, saying that nobody could dance to it. Um, you know, the, why, why would we have that? Well, you guys, um, we want to do something different. We, gotta, we have a large variety of residents here. Um, not every night is a rock and roll band to dance to, okay? With this new lounge, we wanted to change things up. We wanted some more upscale, some more refined taste in there. So what are we doing? On an off night, we're going to have a lounge singer in there or a lounge saxophonist or a harpist. It's not necessarily to sing to. It's background music like you would. You'd go into a nice lounge somewhere, and you'd have somebody up on stage singing for you. Okay, it's not necessarily to dance to, but I just want to make you guys all aware that uh, we will be switching it up. Like I said, not every night's going to be a dance night, but we will still have those. So uh, just kind of keep a lookout and... Like I said, if it's not your cup of tea, it's not your cup of tea. Not everything is for everybody. But uh, we will try to change up and make sure that we do have something for everybody at different times. So, again, we will still have the rock bands to dance to, but we will also have lounge music to relax and listen to. Any questions? Yes, Kate. Kate. Kate Reed, District 20. Um, is the New Year's Eve uh, party limited to members only? As always, it will be limited to members and to invite, so if you and your spouse wanted to invite two non-residents, so two of your friends, another husband or spouse or whatever it may be, 
that is acceptable. But I cannot have two residents and six other non-residents at a table. You're going to be limited to just four people as, as far as that goes. Jason, can we clarify because we use both members and residents in this Sorry, uh, you're, thank you, Cal. Non-residents. Non-residents. Yeah. So two members or residents and then two non-residents. Is that cleared up? Yeah. Yeah. So I can't have two residents and six non-residents. Make sense? Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jason. And next, we move to uh, announcements from the district delegates. And why don't we start with Barbara? Barbara Elmas, uh, no announcements for District 1. You want this one here? Yeah. Loretta Guzar, District 2, I have no comment. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Jim Nickel, District 3. I just have uh, two small announcements. Uh, I want to reach out to uh, the members of my social committee. We delivered uh, Halloween baskets on the 31st. Very, very well received. A lot of nice little chocolates. So it went very well for our residents. Also, we have scheduled our Christmas dinner in the South Clubhouse on December 3rd. And that's all I have. Good afternoon, everyone. Dolores Doherty, District 4. Um, I have a couple of items. We have our joint Christmas party coming up with Districts 2, my district, 5, 12, and 16, um, coming up on the 14th of December. So we're all looking forward to that. Um, MLC will be per, um, providing the entertainment there as well. As well. Excuse me. Anyway. Um, I understand the tea with the uh, board members went over very well. It was well received, and there was quite a few concerns about the nighttime security. And um, my alternate received a letter from one of her residents in her zone just specifying how she has lived here 35 years and no longer feels safe in here. She went out to get her mail one night because it wasn't delivered the day before because it was a holiday and there was somebody that was walking around in dark clothes and a hoodie and she mentioned something to him and he did not respond. So I, I hope that something gets done about that. We, we realize the uh, break-ins are on the rise as well and that's a concern to a lot of people that live by themselves. So I hope that the, uh, that gets taken care of. Thank you. Uh, Dave Miller, District 5, just to uh, piggyback on what Dolores said. Uh, District 5, get out there. Uh, in about a week, you'll be able to get uh, a sign up or give us checks for the uh, holiday party on December 14th. That's Saturday. Thanks. Gail Billick, District 7. Um, we are in the process of planning our Christmas party, and I just want to thank the Social Committee for all of their hard work. Kathy Aldrigetti, District 8. I have no announcements. Jean Dobson, District 10. No comment. Jess Ocampo, District 6. No comment. Linda Myers Cal, District 17. Um, we had a nice event of nighttime golfing. And it was enjoyed by many, and it was pretty. The pictures were beautiful. They had a pizza and salad uh, on the side. Now, to put on my other hat, as your medical director for EPAP, I would like to give my wholehearted great gratitude and thankfulness to our quilters who obtained material, sewed and cut them so that we can pass out two to three triangle bandages to every district. So thank you very much for them. Patty Lopez, District 11, I have no announcements. Ann Hofer, District 12, I uh, would like to remind uh, my district that the flyers for the dinner, for Christmas combined district dinner, will be going out next week. 
Janice Rice, alternate delegate for District 13. I want to first start off by asking everybody to give some prayers and best wishes to Jeannie. She is not well. She's doing okay, but she has been in and out of the hospital, and so um, I'm keeping an eye on her, but the, any wishes towards her would be gratefully appreciated. Um, on November 17th, District 13 is going to do a fundraiser for our Make-A-Wish, no, I would say Make-A-Wish, the, the Holiday Wish program, and we're doing it, yeah, one of them. We're doing a meet and greet at my house, and we're going to serve warm be beverages with warm spirits to make them warmer. So if anybody would like to attend, everyone is welcome. Thank you. Hi, Carly Beeks from District 14. Um, we completed our Fill the Cupboard and it did, we did very well, so I was pretty proud of our District 14. And then also we're getting ready for our Christmas party, which we'll be sharing with District 9, and that will be on December 19th. Thank you. B. Mercado, District 15. We are in the process of finalizing plans for our Christmas dinner with several districts, and I wish to have you all have a very merry Edible, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Edible. <laughs> no, no bad turkeys. Anita Lawrence, District 18. We're in the process of combining with four other districts, districts 10, 11, 15, 18, and 23 for our Christmas dinner dance. Four of the five districts are all newbies, so we're coming together and we're gonna have a great Christmas party for our districts. Um, it will be on December 13th, Music's by American Made. It's gonna be right here in the main clubhouse ballroom and the cost is $45 per person. I also have a lot of thank yous today. I wanna to thank District 18 residents and other community members who participated in the golf cart parade on November 2nd to celebrate Joe Formino's 100th birthday. He was very, very surprised and overwhelmed. I also want to thank Lequita and Robert Bustamante for volunteering to decorate the District 18 Christmas tree this year. I know it's gonna be a beautiful tree and it will represent District 18 well. I also want to thank all of the residents that have already contributed to the Winter Wish program. The, you all have been very generous and today we, we, we were able to select two families to help make Christmas a little brighter for their children. And finally, I want to, to wish District 18 and everyone in the community a very happy Thanksgiving. Marsha Medjet, District 19. I want to uh, give a shout out to Chef Josh. Pretty much jumped through hoops to get us uh, a price for our uh, Christmas party as well for Districts 19 and 20. I know it was a little chaotic there while we were in some kind of a transition, but all is well and we're ready to go and, and we're looking forward on December 10th in the ballroom here with Jamestown So, and to celebrate with, with District 20 as well. So thank you to, Jeff, uh, to Chef Josh as well as Chris and team for making that happen. Kate Reed, District 20. I wanted to take a minute and thank all my zone captains for their participation in the EPAP uh, great shakeout thing, whatever it was. Um, you did a good job, and I really appreciate all of you giving us a hand. We look forward to having our Christmas party. The, the flyer will be coming out shortly with uh, District 19. Also, we are in the process of accepting donations for our holiday wish program and we are also we are in charge of filling the cupboard at the senior center that's that's for us this month so we are collecting food stuff for that and the checks for the holiday wish program and happy holiday thank you uh, mike mike bowles district 22 i want to remind my district of our uh, fill the cupboards program um, hopefully we can get, uh, get that going. Uh, very um, successful um, pizza party we had and uh, generated cash for the uh, veterans that we're gonna be donating to from that. 
And that's about it, but thank you very much. My name is Charlie, London District 23, and we had a very successful fall Thanksgiving, or it wasn't thing, Halloween party. We had uh, 38 people join us for some comfort food. One of our social committee members made some beef stew. Went over real well, and we did a little white elephant sell and uh, some adopt a ghost. We made some money on that. These were little things that glow in the dark. So we came up with $170 approximately for donations to help with our Make-A-Wish. Uh, district is very good in contributing. I'm very happy and proud of the people that reside in my district. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Cal Martin, District 21. We had a pretty successful Halloween event uh, at the end of October. Uh, a bunch of people came, more than, <laughs> more than almost the South Club House could have fit, including a dance floor. And it was really rewarding to see so many people come out, you know, come out and have a good time. Because what else are we supposed to do? We're retired. Get out and have a good time. And that's all I'm going to say. So we'll move to uh, old business, if anybody has any old business they want to bring forward at this time. And I anticipated that, but we do have something in new business. And so, Jean, it's your motion. Jean? I want to make a motion that we have a delegate meeting in December. I think there's enough going on that we should continue the momentum of taking care of our district and sharing experiences. I, I just don't feel that it's appropriate to be dark in any month. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to hold uh, the delegate assembly meeting next month in the month of December. Would anyone like to second that? B? Second. B seconds it. Pardon? Okay. She seconded my motion. Yes. Okay, now, does any, did anyone want to speak uh, in favor of this motion? B. Do we have a date selected? It's, it's usually December first 5th? Thursday. Yes. Thank you. Does anyone want to speak against? Barbara. I think we have enough going on in December with the tree lightings and the parties and all that stuff that we really don't need a, a meeting in December. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, Dave Miller, District 5. I agree with District 1. I can hear you. Well, hello? Hello? Okay. Anyway, I don't think we need a meeting next uh, next month. Can you hear them, B? <laughs> <laughs> no, no you, you asked for it, B. Uh, uh, there's just with the holiday wish and everything else that's going on. I I just we I think the last couple of years we've gone dark, and uh, I think we should uh, continue that. Linda. Well, let's split the difference. If there are people that want to go to a workshop where we continue working on the things we're working on uh, and the other people don't want to come, maybe that would be. I think you're talking about a different, a different motion here. So do you want to speak in favor of this motion or against it? I'm against the full against, compliment. Against having a meeting in December. Mm -hmm but you might consider a workshop. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I didn't do it. Um, I just briefly glanced at the calendar. Now, we know that the um, Master Board, am I correct, does not have a meeting in December. Is that correct? There is planned a December 11th meeting. We're leaving it open in case there is items to address 
but it would only be for those items. It will not be a full meeting. I've already had a discussion with the board of, I don't think there's a need to have a full meeting in December based on the agenda we're putting together for the 20th of November. So if there's an emergency item or there is an action item that needs to be done, we will then announce that we're having a December 11th meeting at the November 20th meeting. So tentatively, there is planned to have a meeting, but small agenda, in and out, basically, is what we'd like. Okay, um, just looking at the calendar then, the next meeting after December 5th would be January 2nd. Would we be meeting then Correct. as well? Correct, yes. Okay. Reserved January 2nd. January 2nd would be yes. the next, yes. Okay, if there's, Jim, did you have a comment? Uh, thank you, Jim Nickel, District 3. I just agree with, uh, with Dave. I, th I think there's so many activities and dates going on, and we have our own personal lives during that period. I think we've always gone dark. I totally think that's the action we should take. I'm affirmative. Thank you. Don't go away yet, Jess. You got to vote. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's time. If there's no other comments for or against, then we shall hold the vote. The motion that we're voting on is to whether or not we will hold a regular uh, delegate assembly meeting in the month of December, uh, exact date or time yet to be announced. And so uh, all those in favor, please raise your hands. And those against? Okay, and nobody abstained. So uh, the motion does not carry. We will not have a meeting in the month of December for the de delegate assembly. Okay, we, then we next to move to the uh, member. Just a point of clarification. I don't think we have our, uh, our parlamentarian, but um, we, there for point of order. Oh, point of order, Jess. Yes. I believe there was, could be a motion if you wanted to do a workshop, just to, there was a question on that. Or you can make that comment, if you want to. which could be a motion. I, I can't. People. Prohibited. Okay, I'm learning the rules here. Um, if there are people that want to work on something, because we have a lot of brand new delegates, even though they're busy with everything else, there may be um, a chance to have a workshop. So I make a motion that we might have a small workshop like we do at the North Clubhouse. Okay, motion's been made to hold a December meeting of the workshop for the delegate assembly. Is there a second? Second. And B has a second to that motion. And now does anyone want to speak in favor of that? Actually, I have a question. Do you not have one scheduled for December? I do not. Okay. Anyone wants? Question? She wanted to know if there was one already scheduled for December, and I did not put one on the calendar for December. Um, only because the Delegate Assembly was not meeting, and it's Christmas, and people get kind of busy, and they travel. But anyway, does anyone want to speak in favor of or against this particular motion to have a uh, workshop for the Delegate Assembly in the month of December? Uh, Dave, Miller, <laughs> Dave Miller, District 5. Uh, I, I'm against it uh, for the same reasons for going dark on the regular meeting. Everybody's too busy. I've got 11 grandkids. A lot of presents to buy. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay, if there's no other uh, comment, then we will move to a vote. And the vote is on whether or not we will hold a meeting in December for the delegate workshop. So uh, all those in favor? Those opposed? And again, pretty conclusive. Okay, we will not have a workshop in the month of January, I mean December, but you will have one in January, so we'll look forward to that. Next, we move to the member comments from uh, residents and members, and I uh, just want to remind everybody, you're allowed three minutes, and we uh, hope that you will keep your comments something uh, that is pertinent or germane to what the Delegate Assembly has to execute, so. Steve Nee, Sunrise Drive. Two months ago, Cal contacted our group EPAP Animal Rescue and ask if we would make a presentation to you about what our group does, 
has done over the years, et cetera, which we did. And we appreciate that very much. One of our goals is to always, over the years, let all the residents know what we do to help you with your pets. One of the three things, three things we did try to emphasize to all of you, what to do if your dog escapes your property, how we can help you. The second thing is what to do if you find a stray animal, how we can help that stray animal. And the third thing was we need donations. We were hoping all of you would put that in your newsletters. Unfortunately, uh, from what we saw, only a couple delegates put it in their newsletter. But we do want to thank one delegate for putting everything in his newsletter. He put in there what to do if your dog escapes, who to call, how we can help you find your animal, number two, what to do if you find a, straw, a lost pet in Sun Lakes or a stray pet, what to do, who to call, how we can help you and save the pet, and also that we needed donations. As a result of him putting it in his newsletter, we received several hundred dollars. Now that sounds like a lot of money, it's not. We spent $1,500 on one dog getting medical treatment. We spent $600 on one dog getting medical treatment. So our, our, our monies go out quickly. But anyway, we want to thank that one delegate for putting everything in his newsletter. So Charlie, District 23, thank you very much. You put everything in there. And hopefully, all of you delegates, if you could please put those three points in your newsletter, it would help because we're still getting calls today from residents. We lost our dog, what do we do? So thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Um, may I? Yeah, Marsha? Steve, I have a suggestion. You put that in writing and send it to all the delegates yes. on what you're looking for. I'd be happy to put it in there, but there's so much stuff that you take, we, minute, notes that Marcia, we take here. Marsha, just go back two months and look at Charlie's newsletter. It was in there perfectly, seriously. Well, that's fine, yeah. but if you send something to each delegate, this I don't is have, what goes I don't have emails of everything. Send it, you Charlie? Send it. Okay. Charlie? Yep. Hi, Charlie. I'll, I'll send it. Thank you for doing that. And I'll, I'll pick it up off the uh, website and send it out to everybody. Thank you, Cal. You're welcome. Is there anyone else from the audience? Any re members or residents that want to make public comment? Okay, then could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. A second. And we're done.